I have been fed up with working with WordPress hosted on Amazon Lightsail. And then I had this realization that I'm a really a .NET content creator unless I have my own blog hosted in a .NET framework environment. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, I'm gonna introduce you to Steven Giesel's Blazor blog engine. And for some background, I've been live streaming about my migration from WordPress over to this Blazor blog engine, the different steps I've had to take along the way. And I wanted to make this video to introduce you to the different features in this blog engine. Now, this will be a video series, so I will go more in depth into these different features that we'll walk through, but this video will serve as a high level for the features that are available at this moment. If that sounds interesting, just a reminder to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. Now let's go jump over to GitHub and check out this repository. All right, so Steven's blog engine is here on GitHub at link.net slash blog. I will have a link below for you to check that out. And this is a totally open source MIT licensed Blazor blog engine. And it does have a bunch of features that can get you up and running. Honestly, if you download this thing, build it in Visual Studio and press play, it just runs locally perfectly. And you can truly just start adding blog posts in your local test environment. So it's very simple to use. I love that it's basically just plug and play and basically any time that I was putzing around with it having trouble, it's because I was messing things up on my own. So out of the box, it does work really well. So I want to jump over to Steven's blog here. So this is Steven's blog running his Blazor blog engine. When we go to check out mine, you'll see that it's basically the same exact style. It's just that he has different theming, obviously different content. Um, you'll see a picture of him and on mine, it will look slightly different, obviously, because I'm not Steven, but the layout and everything that we see here is very much the same. So we can click on blog articles. We can see that it's in Markdown. It has, uh, you know, code that you can embed directly. It's Awesome. Now, if we jump over to mine, you'll see that it's very similar in terms of the title bar and everything. I've customized this in my own fork of the repository. I have a newsletter sign up section as well, and then a little bit about me. And then again, the posts that are listed here. Now, these posts look a little bit different. They have a special border on them, and I'll touch on that in just a moment. But otherwise, we can go over to the post section and I can click on posts. And then I have this big archive of all the blogs that I've written. And if we pick something, I don't know, from 2023, we can see that I I have blog articles as well with the uh, code embed here. It's truly just out of the box, worked really awesome. Back to what this blog engine supports. Now, I think it's pretty cool if we jump down to the documentation here. So we have authorization. So uh, this might seem pretty simple on the surface, obviously, but if you are running a website and you need to be able to edit the blog posts, add blog posts, you don't wanna have that exposed to everyone, obviously. So the authorization module allows you to customize that. You can use Auth0, you can use Azure for this as well. Uh, I did start with Azure on mine. I have moved to Auth0. I will make a video on that so you can see how that all works with Auth0. Uh, comments, I have not hooked up comments, but it does have uh, plugin ability to work with different uh, comment providers. So those are hosted entirely separately. Uh, I think Discuss is one of them. It's spelled kind of funny, but that is a third party thing that you can hook up to have comment support on your blog posts. The storage provider provider is a extensible way that you can pick a different storage mechanism. So out of the box, it will just work with a SQLite database. Super handy if you're trying to run this stuff locally just to test it out. And that way it will just use a database that actually uses an in-memory SQLite database. But it's important to note, and I actually talk with Steven about this, it's not just a fake database, like it's a API that looks like a database, but it's just a dictionary or something like that. It truly is running SQLite in an in-memory memory database. Now it's awesome because you can pick the different storage providers. So in my own deployment, I have hooked this up to Azure and it has a MySQL database running there. So very configurable, very easy to do. And I will again, make a video on how to do this. And in my case, using Azure with MySQL. The media upload is actually something that I talked to Steven about as well. And uh, this is coming from the live streams. So I thought that it was really awesome that Steven took feedback on this because in my use case, I was migrating from WordPress, right? So coming from WordPress over to this blog engine, I have a bunch of content. I have a bunch of posts. 
So when it came to the media upload, I needed to make sure that if I had content uh, online in terms of pictures and stuff, I could move that over to somewhere and have it all be reusable. Now, in my case, I wasn't sure if I was going to have to deal with broken links on the media. I really didn't want to have to worry about that. So Stephen came up with a way that I can essentially do most of that migration, but it does work with Azure Blob Storage, which is super cool. You can hook up a CDN on top of that, so a content delivery network. And again, I will make a video on that because that's what I'm leveraging for my own blog now. The search engine optimization settings, uh, I think from my perspective, uh, when I go to contribute back to this blog engine, that's what I want to try and help contribute to. I think there are things that I was leveraging in WordPress in terms of plugins. That's honestly probably why I ran into such a big problem with WordPress at the end of the day was because I had so many plugins trying to help do certain things that it really just made it completely unwieldy. But I do want to contribute back for some different search engine optimization uh, concepts. Uh, especially in terms of structured data to give back to the search crawler bots like the Google bot to be able to pick up things like if you had a blog that you wanted to post recipes on, you can structure data such that uh, Google will pick that up. So there's some things that I'm considering writing to give back to this and I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Now, jumping over to some advanced features, just to touch on this, short codes is again another feature that I suggested to Steven, and he went ahead and implemented it right away. I thought this was super cool that he did this. The idea behind a short code is it comes from me using WordPress, and it's the idea that you can have like these reusable uh, components for a lack of better word. So for example, if I wanted to write blog articles and reference, you know, either a course that I've created or some digital product, and I want to be able to reuse that, I can use a short code. And then when the page goes to get rendered, it will replace the short code with my little advertisement or digital product. Or even in my case, I have a sign off where I have a newsletter sign up and some affiliations. So I will show you that in just a moment. And then something that I have not used that I just found as I was going to make this video is this critical CSS generator. So this is interesting. I will definitely play around with it. But uh, the concept here is that you can get more optimization out of the page load. So again, if you are taking blogging seriously and you're trying to make sure that you can uh, get uh, indexed uh, accordingly and you want to have uh, basically a good user experience, there's a lot of different optimizations to look at. I am certainly not an expert at running a super awesome high performance blog because if you've visited my website over the past couple of years, you'd probably say, Nick, I know that you're not good at this. And that's why I am trying to make sure that I can have input into this kind of stuff and have some more control over it. Now, before I jump back over to my blog to show off some of the features, one more thing I wanted to call out in terms of customization, if I scroll back up here, Stephen actually added a members only configuration. And again, this was a suggestion I had because when I'm migrating from my own blog on WordPress, I did make sure that my newsletter, I have all of the newsletter articles that I've ever sent out, I have them on my own blog. I do post them on Substack, they do get emailed out, but I wanna make sure that I always own my own content. And that way, if I ever have an issue with Substack or any other platform I'm using, I can say, no worries, I own my content. And that means though, because my newsletter with Substack gets archived after a month, and then there's a paywall for the older issues, I wanted to make sure that I could maintain that paywall just like I was doing on WordPress. So Stephen did add a members only uh, capability so people can have accounts on the website and then I can restrict certain access to different blogs that I have. Now, if we go back to my blog, jumping over here, if I go back to the homepage, you'll notice, like I said at the beginning of this video, these gold bars around here, right? So if I go to read the whole article, I am logged in. So you'll notice that I can edit. Uh, we can see the whole article. So this is a newsletter article that I have. If I go back up and press log out though, once we're logged out, now we see the picture for the article. We get this banner that says it's only available for members. And then on my fork, I've also customized it to have uh, this little newsletter subscription. Because if you want to see my paywalled articles and you want to see the archive of them, this is where you would go to make sure that that can happen. 
Now, in my own flavor of this fork, I do have pictures added at the top of articles. That was my own little twist that I wanted to do on this. Um, I do have uh, some different landing pages up at the top. So for example, I have my newsletter section where you can read some information about the newsletter before uh, going over to Substack to sign up. Um, I have a courses tab up at the top. So if you're interested in my dome train courses, this is a spot on my own site where I have them listed out. And then they link over to dome train where you can actually go to purchase them. And then I have a tab for digital products. These digital products are uh, generally just like really simple things. So I have an ebook, I have a PowerPoint presentation on plugin architecture that's absolutely free to download. But if you navigate to products, it will actually take you to Gumroad. So totally external website to go check that out. And then I'm probably going to tailor this page. So this is the about me page that comes stock. Uh, obviously, we can plug in our own information here, but I'll probably switch this up a little bit um, because for me, I don't necessarily need my about me page to kind of read like a, a resume where I'm listing out my skills and stuff. Um, I don't really have that purpose. So I will probably switch this up to call out different projects and things I'm working on and almost read more like a story with some links to some other things. But in general, this is an awesome opportunity for me personally to switch away from WordPress. I'm very excited to start using Blazor. Um, I do have my site up and running. So like you can see here, right, this is the live site. It's no longer on WordPress. It truly is running on the Blazor blog engine from Steven. So I'm super pumped about that and I have a little bit more to go. So I will be making videos on the different features that are down here in the documentation. I will also talk about the members only features. And then I will also mention uh, some other things that I'll be building on top of my blog that I needed functionality for. One such thing will be Google Analytics tracking. So I will have follow up videos on all of those things. And when they're ready and uploaded, you can start watching them up here. Thanks. And I'll see you next time.